Hi everyone, I'm Carola and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be painting a tiger eye in fur. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. To start this oil painting, I took my sketch of the tiger eye and I put it onto tracing paper. And then with that tracing paper, I took charcoal and I went over the outline in the back of that sketch and then I transferred that over onto a toned panel and this is a Richeson panel and it's smooth and because it's smooth it's going to allow me to draw some fine or paint rather some fine lines without having the weave of a canvas interfering with those smooth lines. I'm going to start off by outlining or detailing all my darkest parts first so that I don't lose my basic sketch and I know the placement of everything. And once that's laid down, then I'm going to start just blocking in my whole painting. I want to lay down a first layer. And this is what I'm doing at this stage here. The white parts I start off in blue because you don't want to just add white because you won't be able to detail hairs over that as you lighten up your layers. So I start off with blue and to get that blue I mixed white with cobalt blue and just a hint of burnt umber. Every time I'm mixing paint I'm adding a bit of liquid in it and this will help speed up the drying process. This, this way I'm able to continue the painting on the next day. Since oil paints are slow to dry I want to make sure that I can keep working on my oil painting on the next day so I love liquid for this reason. Otherwise, I might be stuck waiting several days for paint to dry before I can continue. And I also want to add that when I'm mixing liquid into my paints, I never want to add more than about 20% liquid. And when you're painting with oils, keep in mind that your first layers always need to be your thinnest layers. You do not want to start with a thick layer because your thickest layers need to be your last layers. Thick layers are your oiliest or fattiest layers and if you have a thick layer followed by a thin layer over top that might cause your paints to crack further down the road. So always start with thin layers and then slowly build up to thicker layers. And as I'm working on the eye I took some cobalt blue and mixed it with yellow and some white and just a dab of um, burnt umber in there just to gray it out a bit. And I again just applied a very thin layer and I darkened the edges and on the bottom edge I've also got some burnt umber in there because the, eye, the tiger's eye is not all pure green. There are various shades in there and the top of course is shadowed. And I apologize for the glare here. I'm trying to work with the lamp so that I could see my work and because my work was laying flat on the table and because it's an oil painting there's quite a glare on there. I'm building up some fine hairs on my painting and in the orange parts of the tiger I've got a mix I've got various mixtures of orange using some cadmium orange, some burnt umber, some burnt sienna and white and some lighter areas will have more white or more orange depending. This um, is something you'll have to judge as you work and I'm adding different layers and I'll be slowly building up those layers and as you can see this is what I like to call the ugly stage of the painting and a lot of people get frustrated in the ugly stage because it seems like it's just never going to look right and this is where the layers come in so I'll apply a few layers of hairs as I work on this tiger and as each layer goes on it will slowly start taking a more realistic appearance. The brush I'm using here is a Konoasa brush and it's a 00 Sable Nick script and I really love this brush. Now this painting is only a 6x6 so for this reason I'm working with the fine liner brush. If I were working on a larger canvas I would be using a filbert, a much larger filbert, especially in the first layers of the hair because otherwise it would just take forever working with such a tiny brush on a larger canvas. So just keep that in mind. As I'm laying down those layers of hair, it's important that my pressure is very gentle. I like to say just tickle the canvas or tickle your panel. You don't want to apply heavy pressure. If you apply heavy pressure, you're just going to end up with blobs of paint. 
And that's something that um, comes with practice, just a very slight, gentle hand, just barely touching that brush onto the canvas. And so far, all the black that I've been painting in this has no black in there. What I did is I mixed some burnt umber, some cobalt blue, and this is giving me my deep black. If I put more burnt umber, it's more of a brownish black, and if I put in more cobalt blue, it's more of a bluish black. You can also add red in there if you'd like, depending on what you're working on. But usually, my staple colors in every painting, I always, always, always use cobalt blue and burnt umber. Those are my two main colors that go into every piece. And why the cobalt blue? Because it's an opaque blue, and it has a really strong pigment, and it's just a great blue to work with. Sometimes if I want a more transparent blue or vibrant blue, I'll use the ultramarine. The cobalt blue is always on my palette, as is the burnt umber. A lot of my gray mixes will start off with cobalt blue and burnt umber. So here as I'm working on the whites, I just added some whiter whites, but still not pure white. It's still There's still a mixture of cobalt blue and white and a dab of burnt umber. And now I'm going to detail the eye now that it's dry. And here I'm working with, again, cobalt blue added in a bit of my green mixture that I mixed myself using cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. And I also added some burnt umber and burnt sienna, just gently glazed around the pupil in the middle of the eye. And now I'm making those interesting lines that are in the tiger eye, but it's still looking a little bit ugly at this stage. So I'm just building up as I go along, and I'll smooth everything out at the end with a dry brush. And I keep some of my old liner brushes. Once they're destroyed, I keep them for this reason because they're nice and soft and fluffy. And I can use them when they're dry to just smooth out paints and blur edges and soften edges. And I'm still building up layers in the hairs. It's important to always follow the direction of the hair as you're applying the hair. Notice the pattern of the fur on the tiger or any animal that you're painting, or birds, and feathers. You always want to pay attention which direction are those hairs going. And are they longer hairs? Are they shorter hairs? And you don't want to make just straight lines. You want to kind of intersect them and cross one over the other to make them appear more natural. And making sure that each layer is lighter than the last. And this way you start to notice some depth and realism. I always want to make sure that the hairs have three or four different shades or tones in there. The more different shades or tones, the more realistic it'll look. And here's the completed painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you head on over to my website at carolrodrigue.com and join my newsletter, I will send you a free still life mini ebook. Thanks for watching.